My guest today is a special person who has devoted his life to cancer research. Now we're going to meet a doctor who has spent his entire life studying cancer and treating cancer patients in the U.S. In 1991, he was chosen as the best doctor of the year in the U.S. Moreover, he built a successful career as both a doctor and scholar, publishing over 350 medical journals, as well as multiple textbooks on nuclear medicine and molecular imaging. I thought that the most valuable thing a human being can do is to help others, particularly needed people. So uh, I like to teach uh, students and also uh, help uh, them uh, in their you know, professional career as well as their life. So uh, that's my uh, last challenge in my life. Good morning. I thank your organizing committee for inviting me to be here, and I also thank you for a nice video, uh, video presentation to introduce me. I already enjoyed the dancing very much, so I appreciate all dancers to prepare for such a exciting dancing. Well, uh, I'm very honored and privileged, and also uh, have a pleasure to talk to you about uh, health and faith. Uh, I was born in a Christian family at a relatively small city in Korea and raised there during the Japanese control of Korea and also during the Korean War. Uh, as you can imagine, those times were very difficult time uh, in uh, many uh, respects, uh, particularly financially. So uh, uh, I it was a private tutor during my whole school years from uh, middle school to graduate school. And from that experience, uh, I know how to manage my time wisely. And also, I do not have any problem to eat any foods when I travel uh, uh, all kinds of places in the world. Well, that means uh, I was well disciplined. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, uh, although my parents were not well educated, uh, nor well off, uh, they encouraged me to uh, do the following things. Number one, uh, pursue the best uh, education I could possibly. Uh, second, uh, dedicate my life to help others. And third, uh, glorify uh, you know, our Lord by these actions. It is because of these values, which I have tried hard to live up in, that I am able to speak to you uh, about the power of education and uh, some medical experience and research, as well as uh, uh, miracles I have experienced, which, were not, which are not uh, explained by certain scientific uh, logics or common sense. My parents advised me to be a, a doctor to help the sick uh, people for whom we couldn't do anything during the Korean War. But uh, I was always interested in designing uh, or architecture because uh, uh, those uh, professionals uh, seem to use others' money for their uh, sort of a, uh, personal sort of a enjoyment uh, or hobby. Uh, well, anyway. Uh, in my days, uh, I had to obey my parents' advice, but uh, I had a dream to uh, change people's lives uh, for the better or a, uh, make a difference in someone else's life. So I, after uh, graduation of medical school, I was in Vietnam uh, during the uh, uh, most difficult time. That's the earlier uh, Vietnamese war with the United States. That's uh, during 1970. Uh, uh, seven, early seven through uh, 1979. I was a pre preventive medicine officer in the uh, Korean Army, but I was assigned to American Army for joint research of tropical medicine. Uh, <clears throat> I often uh, 
uh, had to travel to other cities to help uh, uh, some uh, uh, medical investigation or some uh, treatment. So uh, uh, I often uh, uh, was on the helicopter or I had to travel uh, by the motorcycle. But uh, I was uh, sort of escaped from the gunshot or a booby trap many times. And, but I never had any kind of a fear or uh, anxiety because my, always, my parents always uh, sort of remind me that uh, uh, as long as I'm a good Christian, uh, you'll be with uh, our Lord and that uh, you'll be saved. And that's uh, in the, uh, as you know, Psalm uh, 20, uh, chapter 23 and the verse 4. And the, I also had a very unusual experience uh, uh, in Vietnam to help gravely injured soldiers facing life and death in the evacuation hospital because uh, uh, there were often uh, more than 100 uh, injured soldiers uh, with only uh, 30 doctors. So uh, although I was doing more like research type works, uh, but they asked me to help. So uh, uh, I often had uh, a, a patient with brain injury, some uh, chest gunshot wound. So I had the experience of surgery or you know, some uh, uh, unusual sort of uh, uh, treatment for such a patient. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, at that time, I always uh, uh, recalled to my mind that the, uh, we are uh, certainly uh, created uh, by the, our Lord for a specific purpose. And what I, uh, I came to the United States approximately 45 years ago, and I had a very good training of uh, general medicine and radiology and uh, nuclear medicine. Nuclear medicine was a new subspecialty of medicine uh, I was uh, particularly uh, interested in uh, because I somehow have been always uh, interested and curious about new things or difficult things. Uh, uh, that's uh, maybe one reason I become professionally successful. Uh, well, uh, uh, I had uh, quite a help from the world famous immunologist, Dr. David Goldenberg, who is now president of Garden uh, State Cancer Center. Uh, he and I developed the first radio labeled antibody for the diagnosis and therapy of colorectal cancer. And so I was invited to MD Anderson Cancer Center. I become a uh, tenured professor. Uh, in that institution for 32 years. And I was retired uh, uh, two years ago. Uh, and I moved to California uh, two years ago. Uh, and I had a very unique and valuable experience dealing with cancer patients, particularly a Korean cancer patient coming from Korea or abroad. Uh, <clears throat> As you might know, the breadth of the, our knowledge about cancer or any other chronic diseases uh, has increased, increased astronomically, but there's still a lot of things we do not know. Uh, as you might not know, uh, <coughs> many diseases uh, uh, become naturally healed in almost 80%. Uh, when I entered medical school, my professor said that the uh, doctors help only 10% of that uh, uh, you know, uh, disease uh, treatment, and the other 10% uh, uh, by the uh, uh, drugs. So uh, we didn't believe that kind of things, uh, but after I experienced uh, in clinical medicine for almost 30, uh, 50 years, I realized that's the real truth. Uh, in that context, it is not surprising that the, I experienced uh, miracles, which are sort of unexplained uh, uh, remissions of certain uh, cancers or uh, you know, chronic diseases in many patients. I'd like to give you a few examples. Uh, one patient is a uh, pharmacist uh, who happened to be a wife of uh, 
a Houston local church past. She had a diagnosis of advanced ovarian cancer uh, 20, 21 years ago. At that time, uh, expert uh, doctors told her that uh, she might live only three years. But she's still very active, and also she's helping a lot of other cancer patients uh, at this time, uh, even though she has had uh, almost continuous chemotherapy. And the, uh, she uh, told the many uh, church members that uh, uh, she initially prayed uh, for living only uh, five more years until their children uh, be uh, become uh, college students. And then uh, she prayed a lot for another five years uh, for their marriage. And after that, she realized that uh, uh, she couldn't ask more than anything else. So uh, uh, she thought that the, uh, uh, certainly uh, you know, our Lord uh, uh, might give her some uh, certain uh, you know, special uh, uh, favorite and then uh, living such a 10 more years. And so uh, she decided to stop all kind of therapy. And then depending on more, uh, you know, our load. And so uh, we were shocked uh, at that time she refused to have any therapy. But somehow, uh, all the, uh, uh, we usually check a CA125, that's a tumor marker uh, blood levels. That was uh, you, uh, that normally uh, should be below 40, but her that va uh, value was uh, more than 1,000. But after we stop all therapy, that uh, level become drop, drop down continuously and become normal uh, uh, almost after uh, 10 months. And then, uh, although she still has a lot of diseases in the abdomen and also even chest. She never complained any pain. She never complained any discomfort. That's uh, just uh, amazing, and that uh, cannot be explained by all this uh, scientific means. Uh, I'd like to also give you some examples in the four different doctors. Uh, one doctor is an uh, uh, ENT surgeon who had uh, cancer in the maxillary sinus. And he had uh, uh, about 16 times uh, surgery uh, for recurrent cancers in two years. And then uh, obviously he had uh, lots of chemotherapy and radiation therapy. And he lost the nose, eyes because of a surgery. And then so uh, finally we gave up and then uh, advised him to prepare the last day. And they, uh, uh, he never attended the church that time. But his wife uh, 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 was Christian. And then, uh, uh, because of his uh, hobby uh, for uh, golfing, he didn't have time to go to church uh, almost every week. That's what he said. Uh, but uh, before they he moved to California from Ohio, uh, his wife took him to uh, some church in Florida to attend a certain crusade meeting. And, and uh, uh, he told me later that uh, he felt so uh, peaceful and comfortable when he heard about Jesus Christ's uh, love, care for all, uh, all uh, people, particularly uh, sick people. And, uh, <clears throat> He's still uh, alive. He's very active. Uh, he's a good uh, you know, church member in California now. And the, uh, the other doctor is an OBGYN specialist. Uh, he has had a, a, a bloody urine hematuria for 15 years uh, with a, a cancer cells. And uh, we uh, try to figure it out where those cancer cells come from, but still we don't know. For 15 years, uh, MD Anderson, all experts advise him to remove all kind of his uh, 
uh, genital urinary systems like uh, kidneys, ureters, uh, bladders, and uh, prostate. But uh, he was reluctant to accept that because he needed a transplant app for kidneys and bladders if he had the surgery. And at that time, uh, he was not Christian, but uh, we introduced Jesus Christ to him, and he uh, you know, stopped uh, attending some uh, churches. And then uh, he became a really good Christian. He prayed a lot. And uh, he's also very active at this time without any surgery yet. But he still has a, a blood urine, uh, not all the time, but uh, uh, maybe uh, every few days, he said. And then still cancer cells coming. But we still don't know where this cancer cells come from for 15 years. So uh, those are the, you know, just a, a puzzle, uh, you know, very difficult to understand. Uh, the other doctor is a pathology professor in California. He had uh, a, uh, a stomach cancer 15 years ago, so uh, he's been doing okay. But certainly a couple of weeks ago, he had uh, on routine checkup uh, CT show uh, nodules. So uh, uh, we thought. Uh, uh, possibly metastasis from recurrent stomach cancer uh, or another primary cancer in the lungs. So uh, <coughs> uh, all church members prayed a lot for two, e two weeks. And then uh, he uh, was on the operating table to remove and then biopsy, etc. But uh, just before he uh, went to the operating room, uh, we had uh, uh, another a CT, and that shows a complete uh, sort of a disappearance of those uh, two nodules, 2.5 centimeter nodules. So uh, nobody knows what's happening, but that's the uh, uh, reality. And uh, uh, that, kind, that kind of thing uh, is a sort of a, uh, quite a, uh, uh, unexplained. Another doctor is a, a famous radiology professor who uh, was uh, uh, sort of uh, a uh, chief of the uh, best hospital in Korea. And he had a uh, uh, hepatectomy for liver cancer. And then two years later, uh, he got a diffuse metastasis. Uh, there is no uh, specific drug at this time also for such a metastatic hepatoma. But uh, uh, his uh, sort of uh, students uh, treat him uh, using uh, what we call 5-FU, that's a 5-fluorouracil, which is uh, mainly uh, used for uh, colorectal cancer. Uh, but they just uh, uh, use it uh, because there's nothing else. And somehow uh, this uh, one uh, drug uh, completely uh, eradicate all numerous uh, metastatic nodules in the lungs, and he's uh, still uh, okay uh, for last 15 years. So, uh, and the uh, maybe the more exciting uh, uh, example maybe uh, Miss uh, uh, Su Hyun Choi, uh, who was introduced to me by Anna, and who is the director of this event. I watched uh, her sort of uh, uh, testimony in Korea. Uh, she was, in fact, invited to this meeting, but uh, she is not available at this time. They say that she may be uh, in next meeting, et cetera. But uh, when she was a high school student, just only five years ago, and she, she had a paralysis of leg, and they found the spinal inflammation. And so uh, they treat him, and then uh, she uh, stopped praying. She was uh, apparently a Christian, and so uh, she was uh, uh, helped by you know, her pastor and church members. And so uh, she was recovering from uh, paralysis, but uh, she had another diagnosis of a uh, stomach cancer, which was uh, uh, disseminated. So uh, for the last uh, four years, uh, she was not able to walk, or talk, uh, with uh, all kind of, you know, 
uh, painful uh, sort of uh, metastasis, uh, including also malignant ascites. Uh, when there's so much fluid in the abdomen, uh, the patient usually uh, develop a lot of difficult breathing. And uh, so, uh, uh, but uh, with her strong uh, faith, uh, she uh, seems to keep a uh, uh, <coughs> sort of a thankful and some uh, joyful life every day. And uh, uh, <coughs> she's a really he praised the Lord, and she apparently uh, uh, went to many churches uh, to encourage a lot of sick people. And uh, she's not uh, having any therapy, but she's still doing uh, fairly well with such a situation. Uh, it's hard to believe that kind of thing. It's medical, but that's what's happening. And I've also met uh, several uh, patients who uh, recovered a uh, unexplained hearing loss and hypertension, uh, some diabetes. Uh, during my short missionary trip in uh, Manchuria, China, or Russian uh, Vladivostok, uh, when we uh, go that kind of short missionary trip, we only prescribe vitamins. Uh, we used to give a certain uh, specific medicine for. Uh, diabetes, hypertension, but uh, for, uh, recently we couldn't do that because uh, uh, some patients abuse uh, such a drug and, and there is no follow-up uh, for such a patient. So uh, we are advised not to give a specific medicine but to only uh, give a certain uh, uh, yeah, uh, vitamins or aspirin at the most. But uh, uh, after I you know, gave such a, a non-specific medicine, the patient returned back after a week. And then uh, they all you know, uh, looked different. So uh, I asked uh, my nurse to measure the blood pressure or sugar. I think it surprised, you know, just uh, unbelievable you know, uh, changes. And, they, uh, and also some uh, had a, a hearing loss for 50 years. And then suddenly, listen all things. So uh, our ENT specialists test the whole thing. Uh, it was uh, very difficult to uh, uh, understand what's happening. But that's what happened. Just with only a, uh, a prayers together or personally. But uh, I had also several good Christian patients who died of cancer. And that time, including uh, certain uh, famous pastors. And I couldn't understand, and I often uh, ask questions uh, about why good Christians uh, get sick and die uh, despite of serious personal and group prayers. Well, uh, we can't understand our Lord's uh, you know, uh, will, but the Bible said the uh, a, a Christian's suffering is a rather blessing because uh, uh, maybe more communication uh, with God by prayer, and also uh, probably more maybe uh, endurance or discipline or training for the hardship. And Dr. Blaylor, who is a well-known sort of a, a, a person for uh, a long and the sort of a, a uh, healthy life. He said that the uh, that poor health can result from the lack of physical activity and also uh, genetically modified organic foods. Uh, in modern days, uh, uh, most of no longer perform the kinds of work God created our bodies to do. Chemicals in the herbicide or pesticide used in uh, that so-called GMO food uh, generate uh, penetrating uh, significant inflammation in our body. As I mentioned, this inflammation trigger many important factors for all kinds of diseases, including cancer. So uh, uh, despite of uh, tremendous advancement of uh, scientific uh, discovery and the uh, research, the cure of most of this kind of uh, chronic diseases, including cancer, uh, seems still far away at present time, uh, particularly with the increasing 
newly mutated super bacteria and viruses. Uh, as you know, SARS or Ebola, and also many new, all these uh, uh, microorganisms are continuously uh, changing in biological behavior. Uh, cancer cells also are continuously changing uh, in each individual. The variation uh, is all uh, individually different. So that's the main reason we have a difficulty to treat the patient. So uh, that's the real problem in our clinical medicine is uh, it's such an individual variation of disease pattern as well as uh, therapeutic responses. Uh, well, as you know, uh, we are created uh, so uniquely. Uh, as you know, uh, the alignment of uh, the base material in DNA is all different. That's why we use a DNA assay for uh, identifying individuals. Therefore, everybody has a different chemical reactions. And uh, that's a very uh, uh, important principle. You have to know that because uh, uh, I have uh, uh, about 60 graduate students at the Seoul National University. Uh, 38 are females. None of them uh, is married. So I often ask them why you are not married. And they are very smart. Uh, very nice looking, uh, healthy, but they all said they cannot find uh, a, uh, a likable uh, uh, boy in any place. But uh, as I mentioned, our God made us with so uh, different ways so that you cannot, you never find uh, such a, a, a perfect person in your life. You know, uh, also when you uh, get married, you cannot expect uh, your partner to be uh, your likable, uh, maybe perfect person. Because uh, our Lord made a different way, differently. So you have to respect the difference, difference uh, among ourselves. And the and also, you have to understand that the, our body uh, has a, a, some balance, we call homeostasis, between good and bad substances. Uh, those uh, two are completely opposite functioning, like a female versus a male hormones, and some uh, uh, also a certain nerve you know, we call sympathetic nerve and parasympathetic nerve, those functions are almost opposite. And many hormones, enzymes, uh, and some certain genes are the same way. Uh, drug works in those, uh, with uh, those genes, and enzymes, and hormones. And then, uh, but no one knows the exact amount, capacity, and function of those substances because uh, there's a tremendous individual variation. That's why we have a difficult to treat the patient. And the, uh, <clears throat> when this balance becomes broken by something, then disease occurs. And the, in the past, stress has been most emphasized. Stress breaks the balance. But uh, in recent years, uh, inflammation uh, has been emphasized, and more recently, obesity, like uh, saturated fat, uh, is the major problem in our body. Uh, that uh, so uh, uh, animal sort of a saturated fat, uh, which is more abundant in bacon in Korea, samgyeopsal. That is a major uh, health problem. Because that creates uh, inflammation uh, in our body. That's triggering all kind of uh, uh, factors uh, for uh, you know, 
uh, diseases including cancer and dementia, because those are more likely related to vascular diseases. So, uh, uh, you know, many people have been said that medicine is a science but also art because of that individual uh, variations. So, uh, uh, we have to uh, know a certain basic physiology and uh, try to work on that. Uh, the other thing I have to emphasize to you is that the, uh, we have uh, about 10 million cells in our body, and that's uh, growing uh, until about age of 30. But after that, uh, that the sort of a regeneration or uh, this uh, generation of uh, cells, power becomes less, less, less. And then uh, a, uh, uh, in the brain, we have about 1 billion cells. About 10 million cells are dying every, every day. But there are certainly regenerating new cells. But this uh, new generation uh, becomes less, less after the uh, age of 40. So uh, uh, when you are rich 40, you have to cut down uh, significantly uh, certain uh, <coughs> foods, like uh, uh, you know, for Koreans, uh, white rice. Those white rice is a pure sugar. Uh, to metabolize the sugar, you need the insulin, which is produced by pancreas. But after 40, that uh, production is decreasing, decreasing. So uh, you have to. We uh, eat less uh, white rice, otherwise you end up having diabetes, no question. And the lipase, which is uh, metabolizing fat, uh, produced in the uh, pancreas, but again, lipase production is also less, less, less. But if you eat continuously, it's such as samgyeopsal, animal fat food, then uh, you will have uh, such a vascular disease, and then eventually cancer and, and also dementia. So uh, <clears throat> to be healthy, you have to reduce your uh, eating amount when you are getting old, old. And the <clears throat> cancer, as I mentioned, is a genetic systemic disease, increasing with aging and environmental factors. And the cancer is now occurs in one hour of three, but soon it will be one hour or two, uh, because we are living longer and longer. And the very recent uh, uh, alumni newsletter uh, from Johns Hopkins uh, defined the cancer as a disease of the body, mind, and spirit. So that I agree completely from my personal experience. At this time, only very early incidental diagnosis of cancer can almost cure, but we don't use terminology cure at this time, because we know this is a genetic. You cannot change your uh, body uh, you know, uh, when you're uh, living. And so uh, we only use terminology of remission, because we, I've seen uh, recurrent cancer 20, 30 years ago. Same cancer recurred 20, 30 years later. In old days, uh, we say cure after five years of survival, but that's not <laughs> true anymore. And the, uh, when I see many uh, Korean patients, and they have uh, uh, so much difficult to fight against cancer uh, in general uh, because they uh, cannot eat. The Korean, many Korean patients seem to die of hungry rather than uh, disease progression. And so I've been curious why they cannot eat much. And then uh, uh, I couldn't find any scientific reason, but somehow almost only Koreans seem to have a, such a major problem. Uh, when we use the same drug for many others, many others, uh, do not have a, such a severe uh, side effect. But uh, uh, I never recall any exceptional Korean patient. And the, uh, I found that most Korean patients uh, seems to have a, 
unnecessary sort of anxiety or uh, maybe severe stress. They worried about their fortune, they are worried about their family member, they worried about their business. Even some uh, past uh, patient worried about uh, their church, churches. While they are in uh, MD Anderson for the treatment, they couldn't sleep. So I said, why you can So they asked uh, sleeping pills. I said, why you cannot sleep? I worried about so much in my church. See, the, uh, when you are in the uh, severe anxiety, stress, uh, what happened in your body is that the, uh, uh, the uh, ghrelin, that's the hormone for appetite, become less, less produced. And also, melatonin, which controls the sleeping, is also uh, less produced. So you uh, cannot, uh, your appetite is decreased, you cannot sleep well. So we usually uh, give a sleeping pill, but all the sleeping narcotic uh, also makes a sort of dilatation of gastrointestinal system. Uh, we need a movement, peristalsis of gastrointestinal system for digest the food. But if all the stomach intestines are dilated, uh, you're not gonna feel much appetite. And then uh, furthermore, there's an increased uh, acidity in the stomach that makes a reflux. And also the increased acidity makes a gastritis that often, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, have, uh, have a, the helicobacter that will make also stomach cancer. And uh, as you know, uh, in our body, as I said, we have only 10 billion cells, but in our intestine, we have a hundred billion germs we call normal flora. Flora is sort of bacteria. Seventy percent are good bacteria like uh, lactic acid bacilli, but thirty are bad ones. That's called uh, sort of uh, E. coli, etc. These are the balanced. But when you are stressed, these are good bacilli. Seventy percent become less, less, less. And acidity killed that one. And also a lot of uh, uh, patients abuse antibiotics, which kills this normal sort of bacilli. That will make a very difficult for uh, absorption of uh, nutrient, particularly vitamins. So if you do not uh, supply vitamin, you will have lots of diseases. That's what happened. Well, uh, uh, as you all know, in Bible, uh, Jesus Christ said the life is more than food and the body is more than clothing and he told the people not to worry about uh, their life, food, uh, clothes, uh, but cast all the care upon him more than 360 times in the New Testament. So uh, if we really believe uh, our Lord, then uh, you should not worry about anything, basically. And then uh, uh, <clears throat> let's think about our universe. Uh, our solar system has uh, about 100 billion stars, okay? But the known galaxy has uh, about 400 billion such a system without sun. So all together, that four times 10 to the uh, 22 stars are uh, sort of uh, a, uh, amazingly turning around in our universe. And uh, many uh, you know, physicists explain uh, sort of uh, this uh, uh, sort of magic, uh, this uh, movement by quantum fluctuation and gravity effect. But who made a such, such a uh, phenomena? It must be, nobody knows, but it must be our creator. The Lord. And so, uh, if you believe such a creator, you know, curing cancer is nothing for them. So, uh, healing may come in the acceptance of the, uh, our Lord and the uh, maintaining a sense of peace in the face of affliction. Uh, cancer patients who have lived beyond a certain expectation uh, seems to have uh, a uh, common 
things that is a, a sort of a, a, a less uh, anxiety or fear certainly, and also a, a very strong mind uh, or a, a many sort of a, a lower down themselves, and the, uh, and also some is uh, giving up uh, surface surfaceness. So. Uh, uh, in my view, those uh, uh, patients may produce more, maybe, endorphin or didolphin. You probably heard about this didolphin, which uh, has about uh, 4,000 times a powerful uh, hormone. Uh, that kind of things uh, stimulate our immune cells. Our body ha has a natural sort of a power to uh, uh, fight all kinds of diseases, including cancer. So uh, recent research focused to this kind of uh, immunological uh, sort of approach to prevent and uh, treat uh, patient. Everyone wants to be healthy and happy living long, but you have to remember that we are determined, designed to be died by our Lord. So, uh, a, But uh, uh, at this time, we can extend our life to at least 120 years scientifically by inhibiting telomerase, which is the uh, enzyme at the end of a chromosome. And also we, uh, by increasing SIRT, S-I-R-T, uh, some people call uh, 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 SIRT twin, which is uh, similar to uh, sort of a histone deacetylase that controlling whole our steroid hormone receptors. Uh, but according to recent survey, most people do not want to live more than 90 years. Because uh, after 90 years, uh, you know, uh, the, our body is still alive, but probably mental function may be quite depressed, so you cannot enjoy your life. But anyway, uh, I often use a, a dog, or sometimes, uh, mostly I use uh, red mice for my medical research. A dog is now very difficult because of animal protection uh, movement. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, those animals have a very similar DNA pattern to human being. But, uh, dog lives, uh, the mice, red mice, uh, lives only five months. Dog lives only uh, five years. Dog lives uh, about 15 years. But our human being lives about 80 years with a similar DNA pattern. So uh, probably you know, we are created specifically uh, for the mm, uh, purpose of God uh, in such a, a limited but a longer time compared to the animals. Uh, anyway, uh, Dr. Butler, who is also expert of health, advised continuously to maintain mental vitality, mental, and, and certainly healthy diet, and also set the stress aside. And uh, it's been reported that the the most important factor for long life, long and happy life, is a number of uh, friends. So uh, this is a good meeting for you to meet a lot of good friends here. And the, uh, uh, many people have said that happiness is not having what you want, but wanting what you have. And it's been also uh, said that uh, money is convenient, but it buys very little. Uh, happiness. The real happiness comes after helping others. That's what everybody said, particularly helping for the needed or poor. So it's no question in my mind that the faith is complement to uh, you know, medical treatment, particularly for cancer. Okay. And the uh, South African president, uh, Nelson Mandela, as you might know, uh, was in prison for 27 years. So when he was released from prison, 
all the report from all over the world were trying to interview him. Uh, when he was released, he was uh, 73 years old. And he was sentenced to die, actually, initially. And so he was uh, jailed in a very small room. Uh, it's, a, it's difficult to even uh, make a physical exercise. But uh, all the reporters were shocked when he appeared uh, because uh, he looked so healthy at age 73. So they asked him, how you maintain your excellent health? And he said that every, uh, every night he prayed God for uh, living on that day. So to me, that's a very important message. You know, uh, not many people thank God for living every day. But that's what he uh, mentioned uh, to everybody. And then also uh, recently, uh, Dr. Steve Hawking, Hawking, you know who is a, a, a famous uh, English physicist. And he had an interview last year, and he uh, made a book and a movie, which is not released yet, but it will come soon. But uh, he uh, had a Rugerig. Nowadays, you know, on television, all this uh, water shower, all things uh, to uh, raise a fund for that particular disease. That disease uh, is also a neurodegenerative disease that's called uh, amyotrophy lateral sclerosis, which is not curable disease. Uh, when uh, anyone uh, has a, such a disease, uh, we expect uh, they are living for usually three to maximum five years. But this Dr. Hawking, Hawking uh, has lived more than 50 years. So uh, he said that a uh, human being is able to make a miracle because of his case. Uh, he was told by all world expert neurologists that only three years, but he now lives uh, 51 years without any therapy. And also he mentioned very interesting point. He is an expert of universe. And so uh, they, uh, well, before that, I want to say that uh, they ask, how you uh, live for such a long time? He mentioned two things. One is uh, his grandson. Uh, when his grandson started walking and talking, he was already paralyzed. But what, uh, his grandson, William, said uh, to him that, oh, my grandfather is the greatest person in the world because uh, he has uh, four legs uh, with his own two legs and then two other legs from a uh, wheelchair. And then uh, this uh, William sat on him and moved around the wheelchair so many directions. And then uh, he's continuing to say, my grandfather is the be uh, greatest person in the world. So he, 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 his wife at that time left him because of his paralysis. And uh, so he said that uh, when he heard about uh, this kind of uh, the reaction from his uh, grandson, uh, he said that uh, he, uh, some look at a certain person in different ways. His wife left because of his miserable condition, but his grandson uh, think he's the uh, greatest. So uh, he, uh, he said that uh, uh, he's, uh, he's been encouraged to live longer uh, with his, uh, his grandson's uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, playing with grandsons. And also the other thing is that uh, he's apparently listening uh, to Wagner uh, music every morning. And so uh, he, uh, he's not Christian, but uh, he always uh, plan how he live on that each day. Uh, uh, after, uh, during uh, listening of uh, Wagner music. Wagner music is not uh, uh, you know, smooth, melodical, like a Mozart. But somehow uh, he, he said he is uh, stimulated uh, with that uh, very uh, you know, uh, magnificent music. Uh, you know. So uh, in my view, uh, depending on how you listen to music, your body reacts differently. That's the message I, I want to uh, give you. 
but anyway, uh, we don't have much time. And the, uh, uh, we are in now very difficult times with uh, certainly decreasing natural resources and also natural or man-made disasters like earthquake and also uh, increasing gap between the rich and poor. Uh, many reports said there has not been uh, sort of a shared prosperity since 1980 because the rewards from the economic growth shifted from the all stakeholders to uh, managers and investors. So uh, we have to continue, and also as I mentioned earlier, we are obviously approaching to uh, the end of all things at hand. Thus, therefore, uh, we have to be really serious in our uh, prayers, and we have to love and uh, be uh, hospitable to uh, one another, and minister our own gift to others. Uh, you know, we know everyone was born with certain talent. We need to be uh, healthy physically and mentally to accomplish a given mission uh, to glorify our Lord. And uh, we, uh, we know even though we uh, face many, many problems, all things work together for good to those uh, who love God. And uh, uh, we have to really pray without ceasing and the, uh, always rejoice and give thanks to everything. That's the God's will uh, for us. And I certainly congratulate IYF, uh, particularly this world camp, and thankful that uh, IYF is helping uh, to better the, all the lives of uh, our young people throughout the world and particularly teaching selfless leadership uh, for others. Uh, you are certainly uh, represent uh, our future and our hope. And the, the, uh, I'm sure you enjoyed this meeting and then uh, find the good uh, friends. Uh, thank you very much. God bless you.